So good afternoon, members of the jury. My name is Simona and this is Dane and we are Trower Falware Architects. Today we will, we will be presenting our project Glen Ken. Glen Ken was originally constructed in the early 1860s and is located in the suburb of Coburg. The estate is of individual heritage significance and our design involved restoring and reinstating the features of the original residence while also providing a series of interventions for contemporary living for a family of six. The 3000 square metre site contains the original residence, one of the oldest surviving in the area, and is surrounded by formal gardens, abundant heritage listed trees, and a series of ancillary buildings. The original residence of simple classic revival detail was sequentially embellished to create a picturesque and eclectic composition. Over time, the, the estate was subject to a series of modifications externally and internally with the most recent renovation in the 70s. With this in mind, our scope of work involved restoration and new works to achieve greater connections between spaces and the surrounding gardens while preserving the character of the estate. Existing conditions plan of the estate prior to our works. So in concept, the residence was originally composed of three bluestone blocks. Over time, the blocks were embellished with a monumental porch, timber veranda, ornamental turret, rooftop widow's walk, and a series of periphery outbuildings. Based on this existing rhythm, we determined a suitable area of a site for new works with an aim to unify the periphery outbuildings, which include an original laundry and stables. With the objective of preserving the estate and formal gardens, we perceived our design endeavour not as a new extension, but rather as an alternative capable of explaining the continuity of additions present on the site. This resulted very simply in the formation of two U-shaped walls, one enclosed for living and the other open for a courtyard. These walls are located to follow the rhythm of the bluestone blocks of the original residence, expanding upon the estate's primary alignment while coexisting between the heritage listed trees. Our process also involved physical model making as an intrinsic part of the project, particularly to understand the ground plane condition and the associated requirements to cut, step and terrace for new building and landscape works. This is the ground floor plan and also the roof plan. The next stage of our physical models at one to 200 show the existing bluestone walls relative to the proposed walls and interior organization. So contrary to the 70s renovation, the original front rooms of the residence were significantly restored in accordance with heritage guidelines. And as we progress further into the residence, three blocks containing the functional requirements of bathroom, kitchen and laundry are positioned and offset from the internal walls to maintain the legibility of the original bluestone and new concrete block walls. The first transition from the formal front rooms to the contemporary insertions, a view of the gallery and library. In this area, a continuous shadow, express shadow line follows the exposed bluestone walls and an existing skylight was strategically reconfigured to align with the adjacent opening. Concealed within one of the blocks is the main bathroom and within another, the new north facing kitchen, also offset from the existing bluestone walls, encouraging further connections between spaces. To connect the existing and new, a link was made to the new living via an existing opening and a previous bathroom window was extended into a new glazed door. A steel portal and bluestone threshold clearly demarcate a compressed passage which opens to the new living area, commemorating the transition between old and new. As mentioned, two U-shaped concrete block walls create an enclosed space for living and an open courtyard. And this was further tested at a 1 to 50 physical model scale. View facing north to the laundry and living. To reveal the thickness of the concrete block, the use of steel in the project was considered as a way of capping the walls and in the vertical plane to define new openings. To assist in environmental performance, 
an emphasis was placed on the passive ability of the residents to maintain its own internal climate by using a combination of insulated double skin walls, along with openings that allow for multi multiple configurations and opportunities for ventilation, comfort and animation. This, along, along with the solid attributes of the wall, established the new intervention as part of an ensemble of unique additions to the estate. A view to the courtyard and concrete seat beyond. With steel anchoring the mass of the walls to the site, it is further introduced to the western facade, where the steel plate Brissolé highlights the relationships between interior living spaces and the courtyard. The singularity of the wall also establish, establishes a perimeter to reorganize the existing outbuildings at the edges of the site, creating a sense of embrace within the courtyard. The walls were offset from one another to locate entry points and views to the gardens. The heritage listed trees and gardens provided opportunities for sighting, ensuring that every space is connected to landscape. And the circular planted courtyard echoes the geometry of the front garden interweaving building landscape in place. A view looking back at the original bluestone residence between the Brissolade and a view of the, of the courtyard concrete seat, which extends between the walls, further animating the northern elevation and providing an additional vantage point to the courtyard. Initially part of our stage two scope of work, throughout construction, our clients made the decision to reinstate the former 1910 Widow's Walk roof platform. The platform was to appear exactly as the original and further added to the ensemble of distinctive features and buildings on the site. The Widow's Walk was constructed in the courtyard and then very precariously and carefully craned in place. One minute remaining. Another predominant aspect of the project was the steel materiality used for bespoke windows, doors, western brie soleil and steel link between old and new. A one to 10 facade model built during construction documentation was an important instructional tool during the design process for our clients, builder and manufacturers. And a close collaboration with the steel manufacturers ensured a crafted and unique outcome. In summary, from its conception, the project was inherently collaborative with our clients, consultants, builder and contractors. This was critical in achieving the delivery of the project in all aspects, especially navigating the complexities of a detailed heritage restoration. Working on a project such as Glen Ken has been a wonderful opportunity as a small practice of two. As our first project together, Glen Ken in, has entrenched our appreciation of seeing and being part of the process of the architecture from concept to built outcome and all that comes alongside this. Thank you. Thank you.